Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for coming down here. So, uh, my name is Franz FND. Just to uh, introduce a bit about myself. So, today I'm going to share with you uh, how to build a data API with GraphQL and Spring. So, about myself, so uh, I'm right now working at DBS as a solution architect. And before coming to Singapore, I worked at, uh, in the United States for several years. And I also studied and graduated from uh, Stanford University. So just to uh, get started. So uh, to build this data API for the demo today, we are going to use two libraries. The uh, first one is GraphQL Java, and the second one is Spring. So just to get a sense of how many of you know Spring, can I uh, get as you often how many of you use Spring before? OK, so proud of you. So we are using Spring mostly for booting the application. The logic of building the API itself will be in a GraphQL Java. So if you don't know much about Spring, that's OK, because we just use it to create the endpoint for the API. And after that, uh, all the logic will be in Java with the GraphQL library. OK, so next, uh, I'm going to explain the difference between the REST API versus GraphQL API. So in the REST API, someone will call a get on the resource URL. So for example, in this case, we are calling a get on a person. So we have a resource called person and we want to get more info about that person. And then we can pass in uh, the sub selection, which is the, in this case, is the ID of the person. So we want to get the person whose ID is equal to one. And then the REST API is going to return uh, the data about that person. So in this case, for example, it has the first name, it has last name, it has age. So it may have other fields. It could have 100 other fields, email, age, shoe size, and whatsoever. It will be written. All the information will be written. So now compare with the GraphQL. So in the GraphQL, we do a post on a certain URL. In this case, we just say post on the URL called query. And in this, on the post body, we are giving the structure of the response, what the format and what is the structure of the response we want to see. So in this case, we want to see only first name and S. So we specify those first name and S. Uh, and in this case also, I want to point out that uh, we give a parameters, arguments, ID equal to one. So in this case, we kind of filtering. We want to see only the person whose ID equal to one. And the response for this, the same uh, as before, similar in the JSON format, we have a person, and we have the first name and age. So because the client is asking only those two fields, first name and age, the server will return only those two fields. So they are not going to see any other fields. So it saves bandwidth, it saves resource, it saves time. So those are the main two differences between the REST API and the GraphQL API. So the next, uh, I mentioned before in the beginning, the topic, we are going to build a data API. So what is a data API? So a data API is, uh, a single API to access all the data that we have. So the assumption here, we have the data in a multiple data source. We have the data can be in an Oracle database, can be in a NoSQL database, can be even in file system, can be in Hadoop. So the data are spread out in all multiple data source. And we also assume that there's some kind of a catalog, metadata catalog is available. So the client is able to see uh, what kind of data is available for them to retrieve. And the last one, uh, we assume the client wants to join across data source. They may want to join from uh, maybe the employee information from Oracle, join with department information from uh, file system, from LDAP, whatsoever. So it can be joined between multiple data source. We want to have only a single API that can do this joining across multiple data source. So this is the goal. We want to build this data API. So now why? GraphQL. Why we want to use GraphQL to build this kind of API? So the first one, GraphQL can fetch only the needed fields. So as I mentioned, we want only the first name and age. We server return only the uh, surf, uh, first name and age. So this is for API is important because the API can be used by multiple clients, multiple applications. Different application has different needs. I want to show the uh, last name. Maybe different application doesn't need to show that. So. The, this is important to be able to specify to specify what field they need to 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 retrieve. And the second reason is the ability to pass arguments to field. This is useful for filtering, for example. We can pass ID equal to one 
for a person. So it means that we can filter only a person whose ID go to one. Now, another useful case is, for example, the, the div. We want to return some field of div. Different client has different format. Some client want year, month, and date. Some client want date, month, and year. So there are any other format. They can pass it to the API. I want the date in this format. The server can return the uh, date according to what the client uh, wants. So we can customize the fields, how it looks like. We can pass a filter. So this is the second reason why we use GraphQL. And the third one, uh, it becomes the filtralization layer for multiple data source. So as I mentioned before, we can have multiple data source. We have a database, we have NoSQL, we have even a file system. And the GraphQL data API, it can become the layer, abstraction layer to filtralize the multiple data source. And the client does not need to know what is behind in the back end. They just need to know the API is available. They can retrieve employee, they can retrieve department. But uh, underlying, it can be multiple data source. I explain in more detail how we can do that in GraphQL. But this is the, uh, the reason why we use the GraphQL. OK, so now uh, I'm going to sh I mean, explain how to use GraphQL. Basically, two steps. The first one is we need to define the schema. And then the second one, we execute the query against the schema. So now, for the defining schema, there are two ways of defining the schema using the GraphQL Java. We can do it programmatically using Java code. So we have to write the Java code to uh, write the schema. It's a bit more verbose, we can see, uh, but it's a bit more flexible also. The second way is using a schema definition or, or, or IDL, interface definition language. This one is easier, this one is cleaner. This is the recommended way of uh, creating the schema. The first one is more powerful because you, you, you can use Java, so you can create the, uh, the schema on the fly, runtime. So you can have a while, you can have an if, you can uh, dynamically create the schema. But the second one, uh, for general purpose application using a schema definition, is more simpler. So I show you the first uh, one, how to create the schema using a Java code. So in here, uh, we want to create a new object type called person. Sorry. So we want to create a new object type called person. So we name the object person and we add a new field. So we have new field definition. The field is first name of a type string. And then we do a build. So this is a building an object of person that has the first name as an attribute of type string. The second way, doing the same thing, we just type, we just create a type person open bracket, close bracket, and the first name is string. So those two things achieve the same thing, in creating a new object type. But this one is more uh, clear, more easier to write. OK, so we, after we define the schema, uh, I explain a bit about the data fetcher. So this is the reason why we can uh, filtralize access to the that multiple data source behind the scene. What is data fetcher? Data fetcher, basically, it provides data for a field. If we don't specify anything for a, a field, by default it will use something called property data fetcher. Property data fetcher will try to uh, fetch a data. If it's a Java object, POJO, it will call the getter of that POJO. If it's a map, it will call the map.get to get the value for that particular field. So for example, if a person has a first name, then it will call get first name. If it's a map, then it will do, do a get of the property name, which is the first name, and you get the value. So if you don't specify anything, by default, it will use the property data fetcher. But we can also specify a custom data fetcher, which the implementation can actually fetch the data from any data source. So if you have uh, the data in Mongo, we write it, the uh, custom data fetcher to fetch the data from Mongo. In Oracle, we use the uh, Oracle uh, GDBC to fetch the data. So this is how we can make the API to join across multiple data source. So I, I'll show some example how can we do this to create a custom data fetcher. OK, so next, this is how we create the schema uh, using the GraphQL Java. So uh, the first line, we have uh, the schema definition file. I name it person.graphqls. So we just need to load the schema into a schema file into a file. And then the next step is to create uh, something called type definition registry by using the schema parser, new schema parser, and then we parse the schema file. 
So this is all provided by the GraphQL library. We don't need to write it. So once we have this, uh, we have something called type registry. And the next step is to build the runtime wiring. So we have runtime wiring. We call build runtime wiring. We need to give uh, the implementation for build runtime wiring. So in this step is actually where we specify the data fetcher. Custom data fetcher will be specified inside this method. So now we have the type registry, we have wiring, then we can create the schema. We use the schema generator. Again, this is provided by the GraphQL library. We call make executable schema, we pass in the type registry and the wiring that we created in previous steps. So we have the schema. Once we have the schema, we create a new GraphQL object by calling new GraphQL. We pass in the schema, dot build, we get an object of GraphQL. So now we get an object of GraphQL, we can use it to execute. So given a query, this one can be uh, given by the client. So we can execute the query, GraphQL.execute query, we will get the execution result. And then from the result, we can get the response and so on. So this is the steps how to use the GraphQL to define schema and then to execute it. Any questions so far? Just now your example was loading one file, right? Right. And then load multiple files. You have to load it one by one, I think. You can have a load to load different multiple files. This one only take a one single file. Any other questions? Okay, so now uh, I want to build a, a demo of a data API that returns a person. So in this uh, API, we have uh, we want to have two entry points. One is called all people. So in the REST API, this is analogous to if we have a slash people. So we return all the people in the system. And the second a field is a person that takes an ID of type string. This, this is analogous to if we have an a REST API that slash people slash ID. So this is the API that we are going to build. So, okay. Now we uh, need to define the schema. So this is the root entry of our GraphQL. So we define the schema. The schema, the root entry is something called query. And then in this query, we have two entry points. As I mentioned, we have all people that return an array of a person. So the square bracket here indicate that it's an array. It can be a multiple object returned from this entry point. And its object is of a type person. And the second entry point is a person that takes an argument ID and it will return a single object person. And as before, we have the type person and the first name is of type string. So now the sample query to retrieve all the people. We, this is a sample GraphQL query. We say all people and we give the property that we want to fetch, which is the first name. So it's going to return all the person in the system and show only the first name. Or if we want to retrieve a single person, we, we use the second uh, entry point, say person, pass in the parameter ID equal to one with the field first name. We only a single, we return only a, a single person. Okay. This is the data fetcher. So there's a method before that I mentioned that we need to implement it, which is the build runtime wiring. So I'm showing it now how we implement it to uh, retrieve from multiple data source. So we create new runtime wiring, and then we specify for an object type query, because object type query it has two fields. One is the all people, and then another entry points of person. So for all the people, we specify all people data fetchers, this, this object we need to implement ourselves. And for a person, we give the person data fetchers. So in the demo, I will actually build this data fetcher. But on, on, the, on the schema, on a high level, this is how we can uh, specify a custom data fetcher. So if, for example, if the person is on a Mongo, we can, this implementation can talk to Mongo and retrieve the data. If it's an Oracle, you can talk to Oracle. So this is how we can uh, let the API to talk to multiple data sources. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to do a hands-on demo for all the API that we just described. Okay, so I'm using uh, 
Java Intel NJ here. So I already created the project beforehand. So it's not sure. So I, I created the project beforehand for uh, booting up the application. So I'm using a Spring Boot to uh, uh, boot the application, and I created uh, beforehand more like the uh, a person. How it uh, the person is just an entity that we are going to retrieve from the database, and how we are going to retrieve it uh, using a JPA repository to save some time because we want to focus on the GraphQL. So I also created a controller. I expose the method called query, and I can do a post on uh, this URL. And right now, it will just return uh, hello API Craft. So let me just run it. Okay, so so I can do a, a query here. So it it, it returns me a hello API Craft. So this is the starting point. And also I have a cast person loader so that populate the database so that I don't have to create a individual user a person now. So I preload it. So in the database, I'm using something called H2 database. So it's an in-memory database. So I can run. And in my system right now, we can see I have five, new, five persons. OK. So now, uh, in my uh, query controller, this is the endpoint of the API. So I, I, okay, first, actually, I need to define the schema first. So I'm going to define the schema, new file. So I'm going to say person.graphql.s. So this is where I define the new schema. So I say schema, and then I say the query, the root type object is query. And then I define the root type object query. It has two entry points, all people. It returns an array of a person. And then the second entry point is a person that takes an ID of string. And then it returns a type of person. Now I need to define a new object type called person. So uh, right now it is just ID string, first name string, let's say last name string and then some S of that in. So this is my schema. And then in my uh, rest endpoint here, I'm going to load that file. So I'm going to use uh, Spring to load it. So I say schema resource. And then I, ma I mentioned that the value of this variable, it will come from a file in the class path with the file name is graph, and the file name is person.graphql.s. So it will load it for me. So once the application starts, I want to create the schema. So I will just say public void load schema. I annotate this with the post construct. So when the, this object is constructed, it will call this method load schema. So what I do is now I have a file. So I schema file. And I have the schema resource here. I say dot get file. So I will get the file uh, reference to that file. And get file can show an exception. Also, I just need to. Uh, define it, it says show an, it can show an IO exception. So now, the second step, I need to create something called type registry by using a new schema parser, and then I say parse, oops, so I say parse, give the file, the schema file. Now I have the type registry. The third step is to have runtime wiring, and then I say build runtime wiring. I need to provide the implementation for this one. So for now, I leave it empty. The next one, we can now create the GraphQL schema by using the schema generator dot make executable schema. We pass in the two things. We have the type registry and the, we have the wiring. So now we have the GraphQL schema. And the last step is we want to save the actual GraphQL object. So we create something called GraphQL. So now I have GraphQL equal to, so I say new GraphQL. I pass in the schema, 
and I do a build. So now we have the GraphQL object. So what can we do with that GraphQL? Is this is my entry point query. This is the uh, the post body, which is the query itself. So what I can do, I can do the GraphQL dot execute. I pass in the query. So this will give me a execution result. So now when we return, we can return the result dot get data. If there are any error, it will be available in the get errors. So we can do a log the information so that we can see what is the error. This one needs a string, so I just wrap into a string. So now uh, we need to build this runtime wiring. So what we'll do is we return a new runtime wiring dot build. This is the basically runtime wiring, but right now it's not doing anything. So I need to, uh, when I want to specify a custom data fetcher, so I will say type, so I have an object called query, so I put a query, and then this expect to give me a, a, a text in a one object called type wiring. So what I can do is stop wiring and do a dot data fetcher. So I want to do a, I want to a custom data fetcher for entry point for all people. So I specify that one. And then the object that I want to pass in is all people data fetcher. Right now it's not created yet, so I need to create it. So I need to create a field, all people data fetcher here. So I'm going to use auto wire so that this is a spring. So let spring know that this is going to be uh, injected automatically. I'm going to create a custom class, all people data fetcher. This one is not available, so I need to create a class. I created the class in some object called data fetcher. So I annotate this with component. And these data fetchers need to implement an interface called data fetchers, and then it parameterizes with the type of the object that being returned. So in this case, this one can return a list of a person. So this one needs some import. So I'm specifying some import here, implement the method. So there is one method that data fetcher need to implement. It says get. And then it passes me the data fetching environment where I can get the context, where I can get the source, so to make it easier, I just rename this to environment. So so the implementation will just retrieve all the person from the database. And I already have uh, the class something called person repository that I already created before. So I will just use it and then I just auto wire it. So this is basically a JPA. It will talk to the database and find all the, the person. So the implementation for this is just person repository dot find all. So we return all the person in the system. So we are done with the first entry point. We need to create the second entry point, which is the specific single person. So when there is a, a single person, we want to call the second uh, person data fetcher. So I specify a different object. I need to create this field. So it created for me, so I need to auto wire. And I'm also do. I'm going to do a custom object here, person data fetcher. So I need to create a class. Specify the package name. So it creates the class. I annotate the component. And the same thing. This one needs to implement an interface called data fetcher. And it needs the type of object being returned. In this case, it's just a single person. So I need to import the class and need to implement the one single method that return a single person. So I will just rename this to environment. Uh, I, I will use the same person repository. So I'm going to auto wire it. So the difference now is this is a specific to a single person. So when someone call a person, they give a pass in the ID equal to one. I'm able to get that ID from the environment because the environment containing all the source, all the context. So there is something called get arguments. So I will say get arguments. I get a map. So I will say map arguments. So I get a map of all the arguments. So I need to import that map. So now, uh, when I call the person repository, I get one, so I want to have one object. 
it takes uh, a single string ID, which is the ID of the person. And I, I can get it from the arguments get ID because the user try and pass the argument as an ID. So this one expect a string, so I just need to downcast it as a string. So we are done creating the second entry point. So we are done with actually creating the API. So we have uh, one entry point, two entry point, all people and person, and yeah, so we are done. So and we have the person graphql. So we can now run it. So let me run. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to query this. Uh, let me just remove this. So I want to, uh, in this case, I want to retrieve a person that ID one. I want to see the first name and age. So I just do a query. So it, the API ret returns me the op person of Adam with S30. So I can change the ID go to two. It will return me a different person. Or I can do a all people because we have two entry points. All people will return me all the third person in the system. And for each person, it will return only the first name and age. OK, so that's the first kind of first part of the demo. I will do add more feature by joining with the address. But until now, any questions? OK, then I can continue. So the next uh, part is I'm going to introduce a relationship. I call it an address. So a person can have many address. And this address information is actually stored just in just a file just to show that we can actually retrieve from multiple data source. So what we are going to do is we are going to add a new field called address that return an array of an address. And then the address itself, it has a field, say street of type string. So I'm going to do uh, next is that one. So address, I introduce another field called addresses that return an array of address. And then I need to define Type an address. It have a string. It can have a string. Can have a block. A string. It can have a, let's say region. It can have a country. Set. Okay. So we define the schema. So next one, we need to create a custom data fetchers. So before we have an object for query and we specify to data uh, to data fetcher for all people and person. Now we need to create a new one for a uh, object or person. So we do the same thing here, type wiring, data fetcher. But the object, the fields that we want to add the data fetcher is the address addresses. So we specify a new custom data fetcher address data fetcher. So we need to create this uh, object, create a field. The same thing as before. So I need to create this class. Okay. So just to uh, the addresses, actually, uh, I store it in a file. So this is a many-to-many -many join. So I have this kind of a table in a file. So the tab this is many-to-many -many join. So if you have person ID and address ID. So a person ID 1, it stays at address ID 1000. This ID person ID one also stay at one thousand one. This person stay at two address. So the second person stay at the same as the first address and so on. So this is the the join, and then I have this uh, file which contain the information about the address itself. So in the address one thousand, the street is this block number, region, country, zip, and so on. So I have uh, five five addresses. So and beforehand I created a repository for to fetch those uh, files. So address repository, it loads two files, CS, two CSV files, stay set and address. So basically this is just a basic programming to load the file, look through the file, and then uh, return the address for a given single person. So I expose the method, get address, given a person ID can return me in the list of address. This is from a file. So uh, the detail I don't want to, I mean, go through because it's just basically a, a programming to look all to the, to the file. So I need to create now address data fetcher here. So I'm going to create a class here, address data fetcher. 
the specified stay inside the package data fetcher. I annotated with a component. And this one also need to implement the data fetcher interface that return a list of address. I need to import. Okay, so now I need to implement this method that given the context, the environment, to return a list of address. So in the implementation, I'm going to use the uh, repository that I already created. So I use auto wire. And now the difference is we need to know the, the source, the parent object. So because the address always live within the context of a person. So we can get that information from get source. Get source will return you the parent object of this address. So the source of this environment is actually a person. So I can type downcast this to a person. So once I have the person, then I can use this address repository to get address for a single person ID, which I get from do a person dot get ID. So I get from the context, the person, the parent object, I use that ID to retrieve the address for that person. Okay, so so we are done with that also. So now uh, I just need to run it now. Let me run. Okay, so now if I just query without any change, it will just return the same information. But now I have a new fields address, and then inside this address, let's say I want to see the street and maybe the seat. So I just specify here, and I do a send. So now in addition to uh, first name and age, it returns me the address. So for the first person, it has two address. For the second person, it has one address, and so on, based on the CSV file that we specify. And we can also use the first entry point with the single, uh, I, with the single uh, specifying the ID, so to retrieve a single person. Everything still works the same as before. So what we build is the person is actually in the Oracle database. It joins with the address, which is just residing in a single, simple CSV file. It can be a, any kind of data source, Mongo, and so on. That's basically uh, the demo that I have prepared. So any questions? Directly related to the demo, but um, how does GraphQL handle caching? The GraphQL? Yeah, huh? because I noticed that all the queries are all closed. There's no get involved. Yes, yes, yes. You can do a get also. It's just that the query that you need to pass in will be in the query parameter. And some query will be lengthy, so it's a bit, uh, API will become a bit messy. So that's why I choose to have it in a post. But you don't have to do a post, you can do a get, and then pass in the query as query parameter. So, so the framework that I built here is actually using a Spring Boot. So if we want to uh, have a security around this API, we can integrate the Spring Boot with the Spring Security. You can do a OAuth authentication, everything. So there's uh, outside the GraphQL itself. It's more handled by the Spring. Spring has an ecosystem, it handles many things. So the GraphQL here is just to take in the string query and we can uh, return the data. So the client can specify the fields they want, they can specify parameter, they don't need to know what behind the scene is actually from multiple data source. So the application itself will be handled by the Spring. Any other questions? Sure. Like the Django one where they expose the Gra IQL browser. Right. Have it here? Yes, there is uh, another project, Graph, uh, GraphQL IQL tool something. That one you can install and then it will give you the Graph IQL. But in here I didn't install that, so I create the custom endpoint. 
but you can there is a, a library for doing that also you have it but essentially it's the same with postman yes yeah, similar with postman but it will do the same uh, every time you type it automatically shows you the res response how it looks like so it's a bit uh, a bit faster this one is more if you want to build your application Hmm. Uh, so if we actually give a wrong query, it will uh, return an error. For example, if I give a something called height that I don't have, actually uh, in the log it will say uh, here, field type height is undefined. So the parser will uh, do the validation, the query with the schema, it will match it and say, oh, there is no a type fields for height and I don't know and then so it will just lock it as an error so it depends on how we handle it uh, we can return the error or we can just lock the error and so on yeah so no if there's no more question then uh, I think I'm done